Hello YouTube, what's going on? This is Jacka here and I'm on my lock, lock, dot, and win, and Mr. Pandaria World of Warcraft. This video is very special because I'm going to be start doing a log of how-tos for each specific boss in Throne of the Thunder as I complete them and as, you know, future content comes out. One of the things I always get asked while playing with other locks or just in a 10-man group in general is how do I do so much DPS? Well, the trick is, it's not eye level, it's not gear, it's all about skill and tips and tricks and figuring out how you can sustain the most DPS while helping your rate succeed in each kill. So these future videos you're going to see are all about that. Welcome back guys. Alright, so I'm at the training dummy in Shrine of Two Moons. I play the Horde on Area 52. If you play Alliance, I'm sure you can find training dummies in your perspective cities. Um, I just chose this one because one, it's really, really pretty just what they did in Mist of Pandaria. To start off these uh, videos, I'm going to go over basic rotations, uh, glyphs, macros, stuff like that that I chose. Now keep in mind that you have to change these out per fight basis. I mean, there's no fight where it's just 100% this is what you need to choose. But for a starting build, what I ended up doing for Glyphs was I chose Glyph the Scythe and Life because it provides a healing buff. Uh, it's passive, so you don't really have to worry about it, and the more Immolate spells you have out, the better healing you receive. This provides some survivability, and as everyone knows, a dead DPS does no DPS. I chose Glyph of Conflagrate. For some fights, especially like Horden or Tordos, this is a required Glyph. Uh, it slows down enemies, it lets tanks pick up so you can DPS harder and not have to worry about them getting to you. The last one is Glyph of Hellstone. Provides 100% more healing. Again, just a survivability. Again, you uh, don't really require this, but as far as the Glyphs go out for Warlocks in this patch, which is 5.2, uh, there's not really too much to choose from. As for Talents, I chose Soul Leech. I use this for every single fight. It's an Absorb. 10%. It got buffed, it got, well, it got changed in 5.2. Previously, it would heal you for the 10% of your emulate, or incinerate fell flame and uh, chaos bolt. Now it provides a shield. The shield's amazing for survivability, and you can kind of mess up some things here and there and still survive it, no problem, without stressing your healers. Shadow Fury. Uh, you can switch this out with Mortal Coil. It really depends on the fight. If there's no ads and you're doing like um, just a Jin Kun fight or something like that, Mortal Coil will probably be better just for that 15% of maximum healing and short CD. Versus Shadow Fury is, an, and again, amazing fight for ads that are stunnable. Uh, some things that come to mind is like Council, Horridan, those ads can be stunned and, you know, blow up them, blow them up if you want, sorry. Uh, Sacrificial Pact, I use this for every single fight. I know people can use Dark Bargain. The problem with Dark Bargain is it's only a three minute cooldown. Sacrificial Pact is amazing. The fact that it's one minute cooldown provides a shield that's 25% of whatever pet you decided to use. As for the fourth tier, uh, you can interchange between Burning Rush or Unbound Will. Some fights, like Council, will provide, uh, give you a magic debuff that stuns you and puts a sand trap underneath you. Uh, Unbound Will will be perfect for those fights. Other fights, Burning Rush is better. The problem with each one of them is they each cost a health. Whereas Unbound Will will provide a 20% of maximum health taken away every time you use it. Burning Rush is 4% per second uh, and gives you a speed increase of 50%. Now again, this is kind of pick your poison, which one damage you want to do and, and depending on each fight. As the videos come out, I'll, I'll explain which one I chose and which one is better. For the fifth tier is an absolute must for a Destruction Warlock is Grimmer of Supremacy. It is a 5% DPS increase, pretty much for not doing anything, just having this pet. Now, some situations where you wouldn't want this pet, uh, talent is, let's say, Jin Kuhn if you're on the eggs. I chose Grimmer of Sacrifice because your pet will actually just despawn because you're hopping from egg nest to egg hat nest and it's just not worth having. You might as well keep the uh, extra DPS that you can do to yourself. Otherwise, you really want to go with Grimmer of Supremacy. 
Now for the last tier, I think Warlock's got one of the best talents in the game. It's called Guild Jaden's Cunning. Basically, you can move and cast any spell you want for, well, for a speed uh, decrease in uh, movement. Now, this effect can stack twice for each spell that you cast, um, and it lasts for six seconds. So basically, what I end up doing with this spell is if I need to move, I will cast Chaos Bolt because one, it's a long cast, and two, you can get where you need to go in that one point or two point whatever seconds, depending on your haste, uh, to get where you go, and you only get one stack. Also, it's up to uptime. That's all about DPS. If you have 100% uptime, you're doing the most you can do. Alright, next let's discuss some uh, macro opportunities. For myself, there are a few macros that I believe are must-haves, especially in multi-target fights. Uh, for single target fights, let's start off with my corruption macro. Basically, I do show tool tip corruption, enter slash or backslash use, and then if you have a tailoring ability or an engineering ability, this is where you would really want to use um, any kind of procs that you would have. So for me, I use use 10. This enables my gloves to activate my engineering skill, which provides an almost 2k intellect buff. Uh, for 10 seconds every one minute. The next thing I also put on this macro is the Blood Fury because I'm an orc. If you have an erasial ability that will increase your DPS for a short amount of time, you also want to include this into this macro. And then finally, you want to end it with slash cast corruption. As for the next macro, really these two tie in together. The first macro you should do is slash focus, and then that's it. Basically, what you're going to do is you target somebody, slash focus, and now that is your focus target. This sets it up for one of the best abilities that a lock has, which is called Havoc. With Havoc, uh, the first thing, thing you set it up is the show tooltip Havoc. Then you do slash stop casting, slash target focus, slash cast Havoc, slash target last target. What this will do is... Your next Chaos Bolt or next three single target abilities will now affect your focus target from your first macro. This is amazing for fights like Council, for Horden, for any, any kind of fight that has multi-targeting. What this will do for your Destruction Lock is double your DPS for those three abilities or for the one Chaos Bolt. Now keep in mind, one of the best things about this ability is that it uses Shadow Burn as well. Uh, if your target's only 20% health and you have a target... Uh, our focus targets, let's say on Horden, and you're doing the ads, boom, you cast your Havoc macro, do Shadow Burn, you can do it three times so long as you have the Burning Embers to do it, and now you just hit Horden with Shadow Burn, even though he's not under 20% health. This will increase your DPS tenfold um, just with this macro alone. Alright guys, now that we got that all out of the way, let's go into the rotation, or more likely the DPS priority. What you're going to want to do is always have Dark Soul on cooldown. <clears throat> Unless there's a part of the fight where you get a huge DPS increase. And for each fight, you know, it's different strategies and different ways of going about it. So, I'll give you the most basics for each one in upcoming videos. You're also going to want to make sure that you have Curse of the Elements on your main target. As far as the priority itself goes, is uh, it's Immolate followed by Reign of Fire. Now, this is even if it's single target. Now, this is where I don't see locks do it. The whole point of the Burning Ember system is to build up as much Burning Ember as possible and that to use your Chaos Ball or to use your Shadow uh, shadow Burn as much as possible. Now, if you use Immolate with Reign of Fire, Reign of Fire does 50% more damage. It's basically a 6 second dot with a cooldown as long as your global cooldown. It also has a 50% chance per target to give you 10 Burning Ember. To me, it seems worth it for a one second global cooldown to, to get that chance, especially if there's multiple targets, you should definitely be using it. Uh, after that, it's Conflagrate as much as possible with Incinerate as your filler spell. The only time you would ever really want to use Chaos Bolt or Shadow Burn is if you're using Dark Soul for one, a Trinket, a Weapon Proc, uh, Bloodlust or Hero, depending on your faction. When you use that, your Chaos Bolt, during those times, you're going to get the utmost damage from that ability. Also with Shadow Burn as well. Well guys, that's basically it for the single target rotation. 
I know there's a lot more destruction locks, especially when it comes to AoE, and to be honest, it would just be too much video for this one clip. What I'll end up doing is in future videos, uh, I'll give a little quick minute to two minutes or so about benefits to each boss and how to really maximize your DPS, especially for AoE targeting and whatnot. Best thing I can tell you guys to do is to tr practice and practice and practice on your training dummy. Once you get it down, go ahead and put it into the real thing. Well, this is Lock Rocks Food for Thought. This is Jacket Gaming on my lock, lock, dot, and win. I hope to see you guys soon. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, subscribe and like.